Okay, welcome back um, uh, to the fifth and final in our series of uh, patent careers for engineers and scientists. Uh, my name is Mark Dighton. I'm the uh, Administrative Director of the Patent Office Exam Course for PLI, stands for Practicing Law Institute, but we generally go by PLI in the business. Um, this is the one where we're really going to talk about taking the exam. Hopefully you've already decided that taking the exam, whether you're going to go to law school or not, is the way you want to go with this. Um, uh, and, and now you really want to know, how does the exam work? Is this worth my time uh, and, and effort? Um, uh, the exam now is uh, on demand and computer based. Um, you'll schedule to take the exam you know, uh, with, a, with a company called Prometric who have the testing centers after the patent office gives you permission to take it. Um, to get that permission, you have to apply to the patent office, uh, and mostly they just want to see that you have an engineering and science degree. If that's the case, they're basically going to let you take the exam. Um, usually they give you a 90-day window to take the exam. Um, um, that's changed recently because of coronavirus and issues with um, uh, social distancing at the Prometric testing centers. They've give, been giving people 120 days, 180 days to take the exam, but I can't promise that. Let's assume it's 90 days. Uh, hopefully the world comes back to a normal place, relatively normal, a new normal, um, and uh, you get a 90-day window to take the exam. So generally we would tell you you should start to study before you apply to take the exam. Um, uh, we're going to recommend that you study for about a, a month or two, and you don't want to eat up your 90 days, your three months with you know, studying for a month or two out of that because then that gives you very little wiggle room at the end to actually take the exam. Um, so we'll tell you to kind of start to study first, you know, kind of put your application together, you know, mostly just your transcript, get that, and you got to fill out all kinds of, you know, other paperwork with them, and, you know, if you've had any kind of troubles with the law, even speeding tickets, you're going to have to get that documentation together for them. Um, uh, set that all aside, start to study, and then basically when you're starting to see like, okay, your, your scores are getting close to what you need on the exam to pass, then you send off your application so that when you get that 90-day window, you know, three months, whatever it is, ends up being, you'll have plenty of time to figure out, okay, when exactly do I want to take the exam? When's going to be perfect for me? Um, the exam is 100 multiple choice questions given over the course of a day. Uh, unless you have, you know, ADA accommodations that will allow you to take it, uh, you know, just one half day at a time. Over two consecutive days, they'll give you time and a half usually. Um, but, you know, the normal case is you're doing 100 multiple choice questions over the course of a day, 50 questions in the morning a three-hour session, and another 50 questions in the afternoon is a, a, another three-hour session. Um, each question has five potential answer choices, A, B, C, D, and E which makes it a little tougher than the average multiple choice exam right there, right? Um, uh, the exam is a test of the patent office's uh, procedural rules. Um, um, it's not a test of technology, your knowledge of engineering or science. I know that sounds scary to engineers and scientists. It sounds so different from what you've been learning up until now. It sounds more like the law, right? Um, but the fact is, Law students and lawyers have no particular advantage in taking this exam over engineers and the scientists. This isn't the kind of thing you learn in law school, how the patent office procedures work. So basically, everybody's starting um, from the same place. You know, law school is, yeah, there's some criticism of this, you know, that law school should be more practical. But law school is really kind of much bigger and more abstract in a sense. It's, it's, it's teaching you to, to think and write and speak like a lawyer. Um, law students generally only learn pretty broad principles of law. They never really uh, learn the kind of nitty-gritty details about how the work is done. Um, they have to learn that from scratch just like you will. Um, and you have the skills for this. This is analytical thinking. It's the scientific method. It's call it whatever you want. You just have to kind of figure out this equation. You have to know what you need to accomplish and you have to be able to look at the procedural tools available at the patent office to figure out, okay, which tool fits best to make sure that I accomplish uh, with the patent office what I need to accomplish um, uh, for the client. Um, you only have to get 70% right. So that's two out of every three questions, basically, you have to get right, and the rest you'll probably pick up just by dumb luck, one out of five shot of getting it right. 
uh, with no particular knowledge, um, uh, but that can be difficult. Uh, the exam is not well written. Um, uh, it, you know, the patent office is really considers um, uh, the exam kind of a necessary evil. They don't put a lot of attention to it. They're basically just writing questions and throwing them into a database and testing them on you to see whether they work or not. They do have a beta test system so that they're, you know, make sure questions lead past a, a basic, lo lo fairly low level of, of uh, reliability as far as we can figure before it actually counts. Um, but the questions are kind of never particularly well written. They are not written by professionals. They're written by examiners on the side. Um, and so it's kind of a little bit uh, luck of the draw. Um, so that's basically part of what a course like mine will, will teach you is, is you know, okay, when they ask this, what they're really trying to ask and not doing it very well is that. What's that issue? Can you figure that out? Can you come up with the right answer even though they have not written the question as cleanly and neatly as you might like? Um, uh, historically, the, uh, the, the exam pass rate has hovered around 50%. Um, but never kind of much above you know, the mid-50s. And now, unfortunately, for almost a decade, has been below 50%, um, you know, 43%, 47% uh, year to year. But our pass rate's very high. Our pass rate's closer to 90%, 85 86%, um, you know, on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, so if you apply yourself, do this smartly, uh, you should pass uh, even the first time. But what we'll tell you to do is pretty demanding. We will tell you to plan on spending about 150 to 200 hours total preparing for this exam over ideally one to two months. Um, so that's a one month of full-time study if you can spare that or not. It's a part-time job for two months. Shooting for 20, 25 hours a week should put you in a good standing to pass the first time. Um, our course has everything you need to pass the exam, uh, written materials, very thorough, 40, almost 40 hours of lectures and thousands of practice questions in software uh, that works almost exactly like the exam does. In fact, uh, our software is for all intents and purposes probably the basis of the exam. We were teaching our course uh, with software before the patent office ever decided to put the exam on a computer and voila, wouldn't you know, it turns out that their software looks um, pretty much exactly like ours. <laughs> so, you know, it's fine, you know, we I, we probably had some grounds to complain about that, but we didn't because that's good for everybody. Um, you really just got to apply yourself, go through it seriously, um, uh, uh, and you should really have uh, no trouble passing the first time. You know, do your research, what lawyers would call due diligence. Um, you'll see pretty quickly that PLI is the gold standard in this field, uh, that we've got the longest standing and most widely recognized uh, course uh, in, in, the, in the field uh, and we'll be happy to help you pass this exam as we have for so many other thousands of people uh, over the years. Um, so if you want to know more you can come to www.pli.edu and look for the Patent Office Exam course. You can also come to www.patentofficeexamcourse.com which is specifically take you right to the Patent Office Exam course. PLI does all kinds of other things. You go to pli.edu, you're going to be, I hope, impressed <laughs> with the wide range of very advanced, sophisticated programs uh, we produce uh, for lawyers uh, and related professionals. Um, um, but you'll pretty quickly see that we know what we're doing uh, and that basically everybody else is just a Me Too course. Um, if you've got any further questions I can help you with, don't hesitate to write me at mdighton, M-D-I-G-H-T-O-N, at pli.edu. Um, it's been a pleasure, uh, especially if you stuck with me through all five of these lectures. Um, just know that we're here and ready to help whenever, however we can. Thanks so much.